with my F F ball. Hold on. I can jump over. So I'm doing my eyebrows as normal, my eyes as normal, and my foundation contour, etc. So I'm just going to skip right through that. My next step is going to be to glue down my other eyebrow, and I'm just using the glue stick method for this. I actually found, um, this is a new glue stick, it's one of the purple ones, that this actually works better than the other clear kind. So yeah, keep that in mind. I just glue down the brow, put some translucent powder on top, and then brush it away. And now I'm just finishing getting ready. Next, I'm packing Ben Nye Clown White on the other half of my face. And the reason I'm not mixing any eyeshadow with it, like you saw in my Sally tutorial, is because we're not looking for like a pastel sort of face paint color. We're looking for a really intense orange. And once you mix like an orange eyeshadow with white, it just becomes a pastel orange and that's not what we're looking for. But this is an easy alternative to buying a tons of colors of face paint is just to have white face paint and then pack a pigment or eyeshadow on top which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm using a sponge to blend this in because it gives it the best finish without it looking too cakey or weird. And then I'm just using a counterfeit um, MAC pigment so it's a counterfeit version of Neo Orange and it's like definitely more of a normal not neon orange. So it's perfect for this look, this particular pigment I have, because it's a nice pumpkin-y orange color. And I'm just using my same sponge to pack it on because, again, it gives the, the powder the most natural possible finish without it looking too gross or feeling too uncomfortable. And so I'm packing that all over my face, onto my ears, and down onto my neck using the flat side of the sponge. This is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, and it's really nice for this because you can't see it but it has like the normal beauty blender type shape and then one side, there it is, is flat. So it's really nice for packing on colors. Next I'm taking third degree silicone and this is what I'm going to use to kind of create my seam between my normal face and my pumpkin face. This is kind of like a molding compound that you apply and it dries and it sticks, if that makes sense. So the way it works is you have two different bottles, you mix equal parts of them together, and then basically you have five minutes to mold it, get it on there, and be done before it starts to set too much. So what I do is use any sort of plastic tool to apply once the compound is mixed, to apply it to the seam, and I'm basically just laying it on really carefully so that it still, so that it still sticks up, if that makes sense, like so that it's not flat to the face. And then I just have to smooth down the sides. And remember, I'm doing this all in the span of like three to five minutes. I lay down the sides so that it so that they're smooth with my skin using my finger. And then I zoomed in for this. I'm just taking my finger right in that sweet spot where it's like kind of set but not completely set yet. 
And as you can see, I can create this ridge by just pulling up with my finger on the center of it. And that's what's gonna make it that really scar tissue kind of looking seam. I also, also push up a little bit on the sides and it doesn't tear it up from where I smoothed it down because like I said, it's in that sweet spot between being set and not being set. I put translucent powder over it to give it more of a skin like finish because it does set really shiny. And now I'm using eyeshadows to shade it. So I'm starting with a matte mauve color just on a fluffy brush and I'm shading the side that touches my skin and that gives it a little bit of a bruised effect. And then I'm taking a yellow eyeshadow and I'm putting that on top of it and that gives it a little bit more of like a skin-like color. I'm also putting that um, right by the seam of where the pumpkin is because the yellow kind of blends the skin and the pumpkin together. I'm just bringing this all the way down my neck as well. Next I'm taking thick blood and I'm just using the same tool to just messily put it all over the entire seam just to give it the bloody gory goodness effect thing. I just place this all over, I make it chunky, I smooth it out, I move it side to side, just go ham with this, it really does not matter that much. That's the super duper duper fun thing about working with blood. Next I'm going in with just basic stage blood on this paintbrush that's really um, stiff which makes it good for stippling and like you can see I'm just stippling it over the entire wound. Make sure to turn the brush as you're doing this so that the stipples don't look exactly the same throughout. You want differentiation and I just tap this until I'm happy with the amount of blood and I'm going in with a paintbrush with some blood on it as well to help conceal the silicone a little bit. As you can see, I'm putting it on all those spots where you can just see silicone. And it's just making it even more gory, you know? Now I'm taking a black eyeshadow and do this before you put on the blood. I don't know why I didn't. But you want to shade the side that the pumpkin is on. Kind of the same effect as we were doing with the mauve. You're like doing a bruised pumpkin type thing on the other side. And so just carefully stipple that in there on the side of the ridge where your silicone. And then once it's placed, you can also just grab a fluffy brush and get in there and blend that out as well. Just the same thing you did with the mauve eyeshadow and the yellow eyeshadow. And next I'm going in and just making the jack-o'-lantern face. And I'm just using a black ink pen liner because I feel it gives me the most control to create my shape. I'm putting the mouth where my actual lip is. I'm making it nice and round on the bottom as you can see right here. Don't worry about how dark it is, just map out your lines first and we'll go in with a black eyeshadow later. And then as you can see right here, right where the kind of crease where my nose goes down to my lip, I'm making a little fang. You can make whatever sort of tooth you want, the square one, whatever. I just thought the fang looked, you know, the most evil. And then I'm just going in and starting to fill it in. But like I said, you might want to take a product that is like a black eyeshadow or black cream, something that's just a little bit quicker than just a pen liner to fill it in. Next for the eye, I want to make like that furrowed brow type look on the top and then down in a triangle shape like a pumpkin. And then I'm taking it back to my temple to kind of give it like a wingy wing liner type effect. And then I'm just using that liner to get really close to my eye just so that I don't have to worry about any pieces of eye showing. So I'm just messily lining around my entire eye. This way we know that whole inner area is black. My downfall with this look is that I don't have whole eye black contacts, but I would definitely recommend getting those if you plan on doing that. I'm just taking a black eyeshadow and filling the whole thing in and making it nice and dark, both using a big brush for the, in, the big bulk inside part and then a smaller brush for the corner. If you don't have like black sclera contacts, you can also watch my eye prosthetic tutorial and that is a way that you can shape it in the shape of the pumpkin eye and you can just make it black and that will cover your eye for you. Next I'm shading in the indents of the pumpkin and so I'm using a matte orange eyeshadow that's a little bit darker than the one that I've used on my whole face and I'm just mapping out my line first. Like you saw in my Sally tutorial when I was making stitches, I kind of took my mid-tone color first just to make that initial shading like a transition color. And so that's what I'm doing here. That's what this color is. 
I'm just using a fluffy brush to just blend that in. I'm also making another one down the side of my nose, down into the corner of my lip, and then down to my jawline. And then, once this color is laid down, like I said, it's the mid-tone color, after you've blended it in and such, I'm also taking a neutral brown and putting that in the center, and that's corner gonna really give it that shadow effect so that you can really tell that it is an indent. Once your color's even, you just wanna go in and blend and blend and blend and make sure it's super soft and again, looks like a shadow, like you were creating the crease on your eye or contouring your cheekbone, etc. I'm taking a color that's the same color as my skin, so it's not quite white, it's more of like a cream nude bone shade and I'm using that to shade the sides, and again, it just brings a little bit of dimension, AKA the darker line is where you're contouring the pumpkin, and the lighter part is where you're highlighting the pumpkin. I'm also just slathering a ton of mascara on my eyes, just so, again, that area is nice and black, not even being precise, just making sure my lashes are black. I'm also going in and putting black on my waterline, same exact reason, it's too bad I don't have contacts, but whatever. I'm gonna edit my thumbnail pic to actually look like how I want it. And then lastly, I'm just taking a liquid lipstick that's, this is Kat Von D Lolita, and I'm just filling in the corner of those lips so that that is my natural lip sort of area on my normal face. And that is your mutated pumpkin look. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something about using silicone or about face painting or whatever, and happy, Happy Dappy Halloween, thank you.